All right, hello. Welcome to Asia. Welcome to Asian trading. I was long earlier. Um, got shaken out when I should not have been shaken out. Uh, missed out on a good move. Um, at this point, I am sitting short. Tried to turtle, get in on a turtle soup entry on the first high. That did not quite work. I added on one more contract. That's the maximum that I'm, I'm willing to allow on. Current thinking, I don't know how long this will take. Current thinking is that it will come back to New Day opening gap, which is green box. I don't know whether I'll put this recording up on YouTube or not. Maybe. Depends. Depends. I don't want to show you all nothing but losses. I do take wins, believe me. It does happen. But it's been a tough going this week. Market conditions this week have been pretty tough. They're screaming outside. Bunch of bunch of kids all screaming loudly. I hate it. So what is the fib driven off? I have drawn the fib on this long wick and efficiency here. Looks like it is respecting the 50% of that thus far. I don't know how long it's going to be before it comes back to new day opening gap. So I took two contracts right above the nearest high. That was ambitious. One more contract right up at this high. We then came down into this busy, formed a second, a higher high. Now I would expect with our general market conditions being very much range bound, very much, uh, you know, just swinging up and down, not really going anywhere. I would expect this to come back down it would be the current expectation. We're getting some good one minute closes. It's coming in, wants to mostly close below the 50% mark, which is good. Got a couple little closes above the 50%. I would expect this to come back down over time. It might try and shake me out uh, before it does that. Yes, sir. Living the dream here. This is the dream. The dream. Uh, all right, quick SEC disclosures. I am not a financial advisor. I am uh, do not have a Series 6 or Series 77 license. Um, this is not financial advice. Trade at your own risk. Use your own discretion. Um, these are. This is simulated trading. Simulated trading may not represent uh, Real, real market conditions, including uh, periods of illiquidity in the market. Further leverage can work for you and work against you. Okay, uh, you can lose more than you can initially, than you do initially invest. So that is my SEC disclaimer and CFTC disclaimer as well. So coming up, we formed uh, a high here, formed a higher high. This should, we're getting a little bit of a displacement lower. Want to see this thing work its way, work its way back to a new day opening gap. Um, we're looking at Tokyo is at lunch. So Tokyo takes a lunch uh, for 30 minutes between 8.30 my time and 9 my time, or say 21.30 New York local time and 2200. The Tokyo Stock Exchange is closed for lunch. So this is our Tokyo lunch trading to be specific. Sydney, Australia, I don't think takes lunch. I don't think they do lunch on the Australian Stock Exchange. So we are on the NASDAQ. We're watching the chart. And the current thinking is basically that this shouldn't move too far to the upside uh, as we should be mostly stuck on range bound trading. We do have a balanced price range here that price should be attracted to. Uh, it would also be attracted again to New Day opening gap. Might change the. Yeah, limit's going to go up a little bit. Want to get that fill. 
So balance price range sitting here below. Balance price range is this kind of V-looking thing. It's a SIBI and a BISI. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, and then buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency that are kind of lined up from one another like this. That's a balance price range. Price should be attracted to that. Specifically, it should be attracted to the 50% of that, which is going to be near our new day opening gap. We've been referencing that all night for a few hours. We are three and a half hours past resettlement. We're currently in the Asian session. Right now, around the globe, the Shanghai, Hong Kong, uh, Sydney, Australia, is they're all open. Uh, Wellington, New Zealand is open. And Singapore should be open as well. We are at a Tokyo lunch, so 13 minutes, Tokyo Stock Exchange comes back online. And we did get a good displacement lower here. We'd like to see it come up to the SIBI, maybe refill it. So come up to 132 halves and then reject that. Could even come up, make a new high, and then turn lower. These things take time. I've generally been pretty impatient with my trading, not letting things play out. So just going to let this play out. Okay. Did get a tick higher, 131.50. Mark to market right there, midpoint of that SIBI just below it. Would be great if this SIBI stayed open. I doubt it will. So sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency is right there on the yellow box. Would love to see that stay open. It it probably won't. We're probably coming up for a third high here and then down. They are screaming outside loud as hell. So, we are in Asian session trading. Mostly slow, did get a pretty decent push higher here. Which I did have a long down there and I got shaken out way too early. So, five minute chart see that we've come up into these wick inefficiencies here, this kind of cluster of wick inefficiencies, which was a draw on price. 15 minute chart, again you can see the wick inefficiencies that I'm referencing here, lots of them. I'm expecting the price should reject those, come back lower. It's just working in those right now, could be a long time. Could spend over an hour just working up and down these wicks re-delivering and rebalancing them. New day opening gap is in the green box. That is where we resettled. We had a resettlement inefficiency here on the day. Would expect price to work its way back down to the green box over time. Three minute chart, two minute chart. Thing could even come up, make a third high and then turn back lower. Would I like to see that? No. But it is possible. Okay, we did fill in the yellow box. I would prefer not to see the yellow box get filled, but I'm not, uh, it's okay if it comes up, rejects yellow box, moves lower. A little box trader. That should be our, that's a good looking high right there up at 136 spot 50. That should be the high for a while. Should. We'll see. I'd like to see that high remain intact. You can see that it immediately re-delivered its wick inefficiency there, so second wick up there. That would be a good sign for it to come back down. Okay. Could make a third high and then come lower, which would be tragic. did get a good close there below the yellow box and then a mark to market above the yellow box. Two minute chart. You can see that my target is down here. Five minute chart, you can see the balance price range here. Price should be drawn to come right back into it.
probably going to put my headphones on, get some music going. So we're here trading the financial markets on a simulated account. This is Top Step Trader Funding. These are not real dollars. Please don't think that they are. They're not. They can be in the future, but not yet. Ten minute chart. You can see the price came up into these. I'll hide the drawings for a second. Came up into these wicks. Came above this high right here. Go back to a naked chart for a minute with no drawings on it. Came up into this SIBI right here, re-delivered it, is now rebalancing it, so it's now rebalanced. Re-delivery and then rebalance. Volume imbalance just formed. Would like to see that remain open. Coming right back up in that volume imbalance, re-delivering it. Oh, left a tick open. That's a that'd be a good tick right there to leave open. Thirteen minutes, thirty-one seconds into the recording, I'm listening to a channel called Scammer Payback. We're going to get there, folks. If I have to go through a few more top step accounts to get there, I'm automatically on step two. It is my cheapest, most cost-efficient op uh, option to get into day trading. You are going to see losses on this channel. Uh, I don't like losses, but you are going to see them. Um, Last week, y'all would have been like, damn, this guy's Nostradamus. I was doing really well last week. Uh, this week has been difficult market conditions. I believe that in lower volatility market conditions like this, if you can get a handle of it, when we're mo mostly working inside of ranges, then you can handle any market conditions. Price is all fractal. What does fractal mean? doesn't really matter the time frame that you zoom, zoom in on it. The structures are always vaguely similar. That's how the financial markets look on a, on a very minute basis. They kind of all work fractally. You just have to know what you're looking for. Um, top Step Trader Funding, that is what this is. Top Step, Top Step. It's a 150K account. Trying to get that funded. This trade could be over an hour long, could be an hour and a half, could be two hours, I don't know. Sitting short. Okay, coming up to the yellow box again. Volume imbalance. 
Those oftentimes they do trade through that. Okay, we're probably coming up to, to uh, third high. I don't want to jump to that conclusion. We've got a wick inefficiency right there. Another little volume imbalance right there. Right here. Okay, volume imbalance right there. Could decide to reject that. We're working up at the 50% of a very long wick on the right, which is an inefficiently delivered price on a 10 minute time frame. New day opening gap, which is the resettlement gap between the two hours when the futures are closed, is down in the green box. You can see the price has been working that. Price has been up and down and all around the new week opening gap, redelivering and rebalancing, offering a fair price there where there was no trading for one hour. You can see all of our wicks here. We're failing to close above that 50%. It's a very good sign. All right, we're ticking lower. There's sort of two, two different ways that this could play out. So number one, we just get right down to the target. Or number two, it wants to give us a good swing lower, pop higher, and then lower. So we'll see. This is going to be a very noisy weekend, very sad, going to be very noisy. I hate noise. Well, I like music, I hate noise. I don't want to quite move the stop loss just yet as it could get us a pop higher and then move lower. They're being loud. All There's just children all around me. They're so fucking loud. Every time you think the market's going to move smoothly, it might not. So it's, it's you know, I'll give you an idea of what might happen here. And it would be very sad, but it, it can happen. So we could get like a, a, a dramatic move right there and then drop. 
Okay. That's uh, that's a big time possibility. This this scenario. I got shaken out of a trade earlier. I was long down here, and I got shaken out of it. And it was very sad. So we're, you know, we could see this number and then this. So that little tick movement down there, that wasn't really enough to justify moving the stop. Just formed a volume imbalance right there, inefficiency right there. Yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of videos from me. This is kind of the basic format. Okay, so five minute chart, I'm thinking we see this. So there we got that move uh, that I was telling you could happen. Now the second move here should be lower. So now now this should be like that. So we just swept our liquidity right there. That's one push, two push, three push. Now it should that should be the green light to come down. Could even get another like this. Might want to pop up above this wick, 140 quarters, and then lower. If not, we're going to be stopped out. Okay. Nope, almost stopped out. Not quite. Probably with this amount of loss, if we do get stopped out, we'll be down to one contract for a while. Really not interested in hitting my daily loss limit today, so we'll be down to one contract. My entry was very suboptimal. 
too early. Early by about an hour. Okay, now your lead market makers are holding on to inventory. We'll see what they want to do with said inventory. So, talked about this in my last video. Above every high and low, there are lead market makers. And their job is to provide the liquidity in these spots. So now, at this point, they are holding on to... Um, they're holding on to inventory, so we'll see. All right, you want to get my current thoughts on market conditions. Basically, this should be a three drives pattern. So one drive, two drive, three drive, and that's generating liquidity and then pushing into liquidity. Um, your lead market makers are sitting above every high and every low, and they're looking to create a fair price in the marketplace. Uh, we're currently looking at an illiquid market, um, a market that is gonna be very thinly traded right now. So that's why you see these sort of illiquid pushes higher and lower. Um, I believe that a fair price for the lead market makers for the algorithm right now is down at New Day opening gap. That's 15,107. So there should be an interest in taking us back lower. Uh, my entry was obviously early, like a lot early. Uh, a lot early, obviously. Um, that being said, uh, I am feeling better that this should come back lower. Um, at this time of the day, with considering that this is Friday before a holiday weekend. I don't believe that the powers that be would want this price to stray too far away from a fair price. And I think that their fair price for the day is about New Day opening gap, so 15,107. I think any, any good deviation away from that, at least in the overnight session, should be brought back into line. So that is what uh, I'm currently thinking. Um, I went short two contracts above this high. I shorted one more time above this high. Did fail to, you know, catch the nice push up that we had there up into 42s. Uh, stop almost got hit. And if the stop got hit, then uh, I'm down to one contract for the day. So, you know, you're going to see me take losses. I prefer not to take losses, obviously. But if I'm starting to draw down on the account, I don't want to hit my daily loss limit. Any risk manager would want me to... If I were trading for a company, that's kind of what I'm making these videos for, is that treating it as though I were trading for a company, which I'm not. But uh, at this point, I know that a risk manager would want me to lower the contracts if this trade doesn't work out. And so we're down to one contract on the NASDAQ if this um, trade does not work out. Okay? That's the current 
assessment. That's the current lay of the land. I'm listening to uh, Scammer Payback. Coming back down, um, you're probably wondering what the Fibonacci is. It's drawing out a wick inefficiency into quarters. We are coming down back below the 50% of that uh, Fibonacci. It's not really Fibonacci. It's just showing you 25, uh, 2550 of, a, of, a, of an inefficiency, breaking down an, in, in an, an inefficiency. Five-minute chart. We'll, op, we'll I'll show you on the five-minute chart. It's a little bit cleaner. All the same, but it's a little bit cleaner. I'll give you an update in a few minutes as to what I'm seeing. Just relaxing for the moment. Just thinking about thinking about things out loud. I don't want to, you know, I think one of the big problems that I've had in the past is you know, I get I get hidden hidden in my subconscious. I'm not talking out loud. Um, I get all sweaty and nervous right up here in my head and and if I'm not talking about it, if I'm not telling you, not telling myself what I'm seeing, then you know, I get, I get lost in my own, between my head, you know, so that's kind of what the purpose of these videos are. I don't even watch them always back myself. Sometimes I do. Uh, the purpose of these recordings is to show you my journey through day trading. I'm using Top Step Trader funding. I'm trying to get there. Um, going to probably be focusing on trading the NASDAQ. 
System is inefficiency and liquidity following the principles of Michael Huddleston or inner circle trader. Trading a naked chart, don't like any indicators. I don't like indicators. Will never like indicators, won't use indicators. Don't ask me to, I'm not going to. I think I've made that very clear in all my videos. There shall be no indicators on my screen. No volume profile, I'm not doing it. Um, I'd rather go through 20 of these accounts than put an indicator on my screen. So I won't. I hate them. Let's check out the 30 minute chart. Check out the one hour chart. Hide the drawings. Okay, we're coming up on uh, the end of the Asian session in 12 minutes. End of Tokyo, we're gonna come into a resettlement period and then off to London. So, I might let this, I don't know if I want to let the recording go all the way through the trade or not. Back to the one minute chart, I'll tell you what I'm seeing. So we have one drive, two drive, three drives into liquidity. So now, now it should be interested in coming back. This looks like a sell program to me. Sell program right there. Starting to offload some inventory. A little bit of a one minute sell program it looks like. This right here should be a sell program. Coming into a volume imbalance here on the one minute chart. Okay, getting some good closes. We're, we're, we're starting to come back into that 50% line of that Fibonacci, which is good. Um, Want to see that. Um, this is algorithmic selling right here, just slowly offset distributing, slowly getting rid of their short inventory. Every tick, they're offloading short contracts. So your market makers here are just offloading their contracts. So what happens is your lead market makers are above every single high, and then at a certain point, they have enough inventory, they start to cover it back uh, slowly. They don't do this. They don't cover back their inventory all at one time. They cover it back over time. So you're seeing just the start of getting rid of that inventory that they have. Slowly, slowly. And then it should accelerate as we come down. So we breach some lows here and then, then it should rapidly, should see some displacement once we get below this structure here, 127 spot 25. And then 122 evens. They are offset. They're offsetting all the inventory that they have right now. However many contracts that would be. It's all automated. They're not like manually doing this. This price action right here is not. Uh, humans didn't do that. Humans did not do that. That is automation right there. You're looking at market automation. Right there. Automated trading algorithms are just. Every couple of ticks or whatever they're doing, they are offloading the sell contracts that they onboarded on the way up, and they're just offloading those back. And that's what that looks like. That is an algorithmic sell model right there, bringing, bringing you down as they offload their, their sell inventory, short inventory. Get ready to rock star. 
steady, put on your lipstick for the red cherry. It's a new scam, baby. It's a new scam. All right. Should be looking at it displacing lower sometime here. Close of the to Tokyo Stock Exchange is in eight minutes. Acht minute. Voice in minute. In acht minuten werden es schließen. Cheer is voice in minute. Budget zakrivat zakritsa. Okay, so we could be looking at, it's difficult for me to say. Let me get on, like, real zoomed in here. This is very difficult for me to say. There is a volume balance right here, yellow box. Could be looking up at one more push up. Preferably not above that high that we just made, as I would be stopped out. But we're looking at potentially one more push up here, then lower. Potentially not. Okay, a little volume imbalance up here as well, right there. Mike, I'd be interested in that. If I get stopped out on this, we will be down to one contract for the remainder of the night. Be down to one contract. Two minutes should be right there. This is probably going to make like a complex formation, then shoot lower. It's my current thinking. Complex structure up here, just very slowly. Slowly, slowly. This point, that's a pretty steep high up there. Short term premium, come back down.
Yellow box has a premium volume imbalance. Okay. Yellow box. So we're currently relative to this dealing range, uh, working back into a discount right at equilibrium. So it should want to come and deliver us back into discount. Eventually come down into this liquidity and further. And they're being loud upstairs too. And we're back up into a premium. Premium is relative to this dealing range right here. So above the 50% of that is a premium. Below is a discount relative to this one minute range. So it should go from premium to discount. Short term premium was offered there for about four minutes. Sticking with this trade idea over time, trying to get in on the initial thought this would turtle soup. It did not. Second entry came up at this high, thought that would turtle soup, it did not. Then it formed two new highs, almost stopped me out, and now we're waiting.
these short-term delivery into a premium should be sold off. It's my thinking. Okay, back up into a premium. We're back up into a premium relative to this dealing range, coming up to 60%. Yeah, 60% would be right there. Coming up to the yellow box. I'd like to see this premium get sold off back into discount pretty quickly. Would be the ideal scenario. We're still here and the time is 52 minutes into this. Right now I'm feeling kind of frustrated. Market conditions this week have been uh, difficult. Difficult, difficult. Not pleased with my entries at all. Stop loss is pretty good, obviously didn't get hit on that first pass. Might get hit on the second pass. Okay. Came back up into yellow box. Yellow box is volume imbalance we had there on the two minute, visible there on the two minute premium volume imbalance price should yeah price should project that premium volume imbalance to come back to discount we are now back at equilibrium equilibrium being, being right there at that 135 spot 50 that's EQ we're on it we're on that equilibrium right now just sitting on it We are just sitting on that EQ right there. Coming back in the discount. Okay, a little bit of a two tick discount right there. At some point it should want to displace far into discount, get get just deliver that short term premium there, delivered about seven minutes of premium relative to our current dealing range. It should want to now shoot lower at some point here. Should shoot lower. Four minute chart. Three minute chart. Yeah, okay, came up into this short term premium. At some point it should want to move away from premium and come start delivering discount and return us back to our new week opening gap, new day opening gap. Which I believe that they're using as a uh, a fair price reference. Fair price reference uh, would be at 107 evens. I'm not going all the way for that. I'm going for 110 and a quarter. Going for 110 and a quarter as that is the midpoint here of our balance price range. This prior dealing range. Well, a little bit below that. Just into a discount a little bit. Just just shy of our new day opening gap. 
probably going to draw this new day opening gap all throughout the course of the trading day, all overnight, however much I decide to trade. It will probably reference this new day opening gap for a long time. Long time. That's my expectation. Let's go rush. That green box is going to stay on the chart for a long time. Long time. I believe that that will be a reference probably all day. Regular trading hours to check out. You can see we're sitting. Did we have a regular trade? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to have that. Yeah, that could be a reference here on Friday. Okay. There's that. And where does that take us? Electronic trading hours, that would take us down to Monday to Tuesday, that would be down 14,895, three quarters. I think that's probably in the cards for Friday's day trading. Regular trading hours, I think that uh, 895 three quarters is in the crosshairs. It's it's going to be a target, so I'm just going to leave that for regular trading hours. You can see here that should be a reference for tomorrow. Okay. We're in a discount relative to our current dealing range. We're currently in a discount. Want to see it break out into a prior dealing range. Want to see it attracted to new day opening gap. That is the green box here. Green box is our new day opening gap. Reese, what is a new day opening gap? New day opening gap is the gap between the hour of resettlement and price will reference that as a fair price. Act as dynamic support and resistance. Act as a uh, reference as a fair price so I don't believe that price should go too terribly far away from it before coming back to it so you see it did that for the past few hours and I believe it's going to do it yet again that's the thinking this current price leg up worked into our WIC inefficiencies here redelivering and rebalancing this area of inefficiency right here kind of big cursor area Fibonacci is showing you this one minute dealing range right here, premium and discount, one minute dealing range. You see that it rejected off the premium volume imbalance here, it's working back into uh, working back into a discount right now. My entry was very suboptimal, but I believe that the exit should be uh, a pretty optimal exit, I think.
Okay. Yeah, in general, I found that I see the market to the short side more than I see it to the long side. Just going to hide the camera for a minute. Going to eat something. Watching scammer payback on my phone on the left. So here we are, y'all. Here we are. We're currently sitting in a discount. Moving lower. I'm thinking we're going to come down here to this green box right here. What is said green box? Well, that green box down yonder right there, that is fair price. What is a fair price? Whatever the trading algorithms, the computers think is a most efficiently delivered price and you gotta use your intuition a little bit it appears to me to be this resettlement gap right here I think that's what they see as a fair price so it should be drawing on price right now should be doing it should be drawing down the price alright we're sitting in a discount relative to, the, to this dealing range it's ironing out Ironing out all these inefficiencies on the left, ironing those out, it's ironing them out, making them efficient. Uh, look on the hourly chart and something else that I'm referencing to see lower. It's a regular trading hours gap here from Monday to Tuesday. Haven't quite really worked that enough, I think. We wicked back down into it a few times, but I'm not so certain we really worked that enough to, for that price to be fair. So. I think maybe Friday might want to come down and work 1898-94 quarters. That's what I'm thinking. Go work that. So if you're wondering like what the fuck I just talked about, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. Go on our regular trading hours and you can see that there's a gap here between Monday and Tuesday's trading. Okay? That's our opening gap, our regular trading hours gap. The algorithm is going to reference that as a fair price or as an inefficiently delivered price to bring it back down. I don't believe that these wicks that we had back down into it were sufficient. So I think the price is going to be drawn back down here at 894 evens. You can see that on Wednesday we re-delivered uh, one of last week's regular trading hours gaps before moving lower. So I believe that we're going to do the same thing on Friday, come back down to 895, be my current best estimate. I am probably going to, if I hit this trade, it's probably going to be uh, waiting. Probably just going to wait for a bit to trade again, go, go for a walk, maybe watch the video recording back, I don't know. I don't know, friends. Oh, hey, traded into a new dealing range, huh? Broken into some liquidity, new dealing range? Not quite. I'm not going to call that a new dealing range yet. Working in a deep discount of our top dealing range here. Would like to see displacement lower. We do have a gap here that formed on the one minute chart. Price is probably going to come back up to this 130 right here. This is what I love doing. I know it kind of looks boring, and you're probably like, "What the fuck am I, you know? What is this all about?" 
I am a licensed attorney in the great state of Texas. Uh, I have practiced a little bit of law, got out of law school in 2022, um, and I hate it. I hate it a lot. I really don't like it. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I don't want to be associate bitch. I'd rather DoorDash for a living at this point. Um, if you need some legal advice in the state of Texas, give me a call. Although I don't know if you'd want me as your attorney since I just told you that I, I hate it and don't want to do it. So you might not want to hire me as your attorney. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At this point, it'd be pretty easy to figure out who I am. I don't think I'm really uh, hiding that. I have no money to steal. So if you want to think that I have some money to steal, I don't. So we're working on simulated evaluation firm accounts, guys. That tells you my current financial situation. But I think that it can be done with day trading. I think it is very difficult, but I think it's possible. doesn't want to break us into a new dealing range, break us into this short-term liquidity, break us down just yet. Currently working at a deep discount. Probably coming back up to 131 quarters, iron that out. 131 quarters is on the table. I imagine that's what it's going to do. It's probably going to do it on like a quick illiquid move, so just like pop up there, mark to market up there. Nothing smooth. Yeah, there it is. What did that deliver right there? That wasn't quarters. Evens? 131 evens? Is that close enough before we go down? Probably not. One minute chart. Yeah, you can see the gap right there. Price is going to want to immediately curl back up or re-deliver that before we go lower. Why do I think we're going lower? Well, we have a gap down here, number one, but new day opening gap should be a consistent draw, draw on price. A draw is a pull. Doesn't always mean it's gonna get there, but it's pulling on price, like a like a tugboat. Okay, we now re-delivered that gap that we just formed. Just an immediate curl back up, re-deliver that. Now I'd like to see it shoot lower. Working in a balanced price range here on the one-minute chart. Could find some support there. Come back up to this order block right here. 132 halves. Yeah, could do that. Also invert this wick right here. 131 three quarters. When it does start to go lower, I, I think it will do it with some displacement as we're coming into these short-term liquidity pools. You also have a gap right here so here's a gap down here gap right there price should be drawn also to this gap but also to new week opening gap it should be tugging on price to come lower you can see you can't even see that gap if you're on the three minutes you see it on the two minute yeah you can so you're on the three minute chart and above, it's hard to see all the inefficiencies. That's an actual liquidity void right there. Go watch my banner video on uh, ICT inefficiencies. You want to learn, like I'm not talking in code. I am saying things that are real. They are there. Uh, but if you're looking on like a three minute chart, you can't see it. So they are there. I'm not crazy. They are there. That is a gap right there, one minute gap. These are the kind of videos that I would make if I were running a trading company. So let's say I were running a trading company right now. I was running a prop firm and I had guys that were all, you know, SEC licensed. They had their securities licenses and we were running a prop desk. All right. 
I would want to see my guys on a video recording like this showing me what's up, showing me what, what they're doing with their trading, what their ideas are. Those are the guys that I would hire. Okay? See the facial expressions, see you freaking out and doing all this shit with your face, feeling anxious. Basic risk management is you can start with more contracts, you start losing, you got to bring it down. Got to bring it down, trade out of it, then get build up the contracts again. That is uh, risk management number like 101. So I told you that if I got stopped out on this trade and this remains true, we're down to one contract as as I've only got $3,000 to work with here, fake dollars. And making these videos allows me to externalize what I'm thinking, externalize all this anxiety that I have, you know, put it out into the chart, put it out into the ether. So one day, my objective, years from now, is to trade for myself, trade my own trade station account, which I've tried doing. I've blown a lot of money. The reason that I started actually learning day trading is because I've blown a lot of fucking money. So I didn't. I was thinking that I could do it without learning, uh, and lo and behold, I was wrong. So the good thing about Top Step Trader is that it's a lower cost base option to get a lot of trading in, get a lot of screen time in, and uh, refine. It's a lot cheaper than your own cash account. I am automatically on step two here on Top Step Trader, automatically on step two as I have been funded before. Yes, I did blow that like a fucking idiot, for being honest. Luckily, they don't blow you out if you hit your loss limit anymore. You don't lose the account. So even if I were to hit the loss limit today, which I don't want to, This is a slow grind, so you take losses and then you lower the contracts and then you take wins. You can scale up the contracts. Right now, Top Step is allowing me like 10 contracts. You'll notice I'm at three. I'm not getting anywhere near 10. That's not happening. Um, okay, still working right here in this range. And a couple weeks ago, like two weeks ago, when the NASDAQ was just going up and it was just go up, those conditions were easier. Now you actually need to have some skill. Now you need to have a better idea of what the market is actually doing in order to trade profitably because we're working in smaller ranges. We're working with decreased volatility. And we will be next week as well. So you got to learn how to make money in these small ranges as well if you have to make the money. And I do. So it's been hard lessons. But I know that if I were running a company, I had some employees, this would be the kind of stuff I'd want to watch my employees do, for sure. Uh, I'd want to see my employees on video recording like this, for, cer for certain. No doubt about that. I'd want to see it. So I'm just doing that myself. I really don't like the whole process in law, going and begging somebody for a job putting out all these resumes got to you know kiss ass I don't like it I don't want to kiss your ass to get a job I really don't I'm pretty fucking smart and having to deal with all this well, do you have law review do you have law review did pretty well in law school no I'm not top 10% law student uh, but I did pretty well and I would be a valuable associate attorney and I'm tired of, I don't like kissing ass. I really don't. I really don't. I don't like kissing the client's ass. I don't like kissing supervising attorney's ass. I don't like kissing ass in the job interview process. I really uh, don't like most people. I'm very disagreeable. I think most people are full of shit. And I could always tell in law school when other students hadn't read the cases. And when I hadn't read the cases because the answers would always be pretty vague, pretty general. When you've actually read the cases, it's it's obvious. I mean, it's you can tell. If you or the other law students have actually read the case, there's nuances that come out that the Quimby in this the Quimby doesn't tell you. There's nuances in the judges' opinions, especially the older cases, especially Supreme Court cases, where you got like doing your Supreme Court case, you're gonna have a 
majority opinion, concurrence, dissenting opinion. Sometimes you're going to have like five concurrences. <laughs> you know, they're going to be all over the place. They're going to write separately. And you can always tell when the other law students didn't actually read the fucking case. Very obvious. You gotta read your fucking cases. I don't know. If you're going to law school, you actually have to read the fucking cases. Yes, it's hard. Go back and review your outlines as well, for sure. You gotta know the big picture of what the legal theories are gonna be. Contract theory, torts. I did pretty well with torts. I'm pretty good at personal injury negligence. I did pretty well with uh, negligence, for whatever reason. Did pretty well with contracts as well. Did pretty well with contracts. Didn't do so well with civil procedure. Civil procedure's fucking hard. Civil procedure's difficult. That's for your really nerdy law students. They master civil procedure. That's they're trying hard. I don't like kissing ass. So I want to do this for a living. I like watching the candles dance. It very much suits my personality to be pretty introverted. My favorite part of being an associate attorney was not dealing with the clients. I don't like client intake at all, which is what most what, most of what associate bitches do. And I don't like it. I like researching the case law. I like being up in academia. I don't I don't like being down on the vulgar with the plebs. I don't like it. Uh, you can think that I'm a terrible person for saying that, but it is what it is. I'm pretty antisocial a lot of the time. Not always. I've tried to force myself to be more social in the past, and it really doesn't mostly suit me. Can be if I need to be. I'm a very polite person if you met me. I'd be very polite to you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I don't like being vulgar. At all. I watch and listen to a lot of the same music. I listen to a lot of scam baiters on YouTube. Listen to Scammer Payback, Kit Boga, Scam Sandwich. All great channels, by the way. But yeah, my life is either go be associate bitch or make this work. And I don't want to be associate bitch. The legal system really sucks. I'll tell you that. And you're probably thinking that I'm like a liberal saying that. I'm not. I'm, I very much vote Republican, and I'm saying that. Um, not for the reasons that you think I'm saying it. Most people know that I'm not a liberal pretty quickly. You start talking to me. It's pretty clear. Although, I used to be a lot more involved in politics, and then I met some uh, in the past. I, uh, When I was in college, I tried joining Young, young Republicans, and that uh, very much made me a social outcast. Uh, already being a pretty antisocial person, that was damaging. I wouldn't recommend it. If you're one of those young guys and you think that joining like Young Republicans or Young Conservatives, most people will hate your guts. So I would keep that to yourself. Wait till you have fuck you money. If you're in college, especially if you're at like a liberal school, I talk to younger guys. Don't come out that you're a conservative. Uh, you will be eaten alive. You will be eaten alive. You will be hated. Believe me, you will be. You will be ostracized, and most girls will not talk to you. It's facts. You will, they will trash you. Believe me, you start saying things like men and, men and women are different, biological sex exists, you will be demolished, you will be destroyed. It's, uh, they're on a seek and destroy mission. If they hunt you down as like not in lockstep with the current political thought, you will be hunted down, you will be demolished. Your reputation will be tarnished, you will be hated. So I would highly recommend, unless you're going to go into like I, uh, unless you're going to go into like politics, which by the way, sucks. I worked for a politician. 
Uh, he's running for president right now, Will Hurd. Uh, sucks. Wouldn't recommend it. The public suck, believe me. You know, I mean, either way, the political spectrum. The public generally sucks. You don't want to deal with been in customer service as well. Sucks. Yeah, I used to be really big into politics, and now I kind of think that they're all fucking liars. I still vote Republican, but I, not out of any sort of real compunction. Just because I think that the other side is absolutely batshit insane. Really, that's it. Not because I particularly like most of the Republicans. I think they're all spineless cowards. They never stick up for their beliefs, ever. I always, They always fold. Always fold and lose. I really hate losers, too. Not really losers, especially at trading. You will take losses at trading. That's not what I'm saying. I hate spineless cowards. And Republicans are generally spineless cowards, especially that McCarthy. McCarthy is a spineless coward. Should have let that debt ceiling hit. Just to prove a point that he could. Fuck Wall Street. Fuck him. Who cares? Oh, markets are going to go down. Okay, let them go down. All right. People are going to lose their shit. They're going to lose their shit. Market needs to come down. It's way too high. Fundamental basis, this shit's way too high. P.E. ratios are out of, out of sync. This country's in $22 trillion, growing $30 trillion of debt. we got military bases in over 140 countries. We're a late-stage Roman Empire, folks. It's almost over. We're looking at maybe 10 to 15 more years of this country existing, and then, poof, kind of like Corona, it'll just, poof. And what happened to that, by the way? It just vanished. Kind of like I said it would. All just kind of vanished. Um, but this is not a channel for politics. I'm just bullshitting. This is also my channel, so I can say what I want. But it's not really a channel for that. I am day trading. These are all my opinions, by the way. I don't want you to think that I think that anything is like particularly fact. I am opinionated, but I don't really care what you think. You shouldn't care what I think. It's all just yammering. Anybody who believes that the market should fundamentally be here, like the NASDAQ, is nuts. P.E. ratios, I think, on the tech stocks are like 30 to 1 or some insane nonsense. It's like 20 to 1 on the S&P 500. It's, the market should be like 5,000 points lower. But we're in an inflationary environment still. Every time Chairman Jerome Powell speaks, it's all nonsense. never says anything. Interest rates should be at like 18% right now. From a fundamental economic standpoint, interest rates are still way too low, like 3 and a quarter percent They should be at like Al Volcker levels. The country should be in a deep depression right now in order to make up for the sins of our overspending. But we're just going to inflate our inflate our way to hyperinflation and then eventually back to uh, deflation. There's going to be a lot of pain in the future. And of course, if there is a war that the United States can be involved in, we will be involved because reasons. Lockheed Martin and Boeing and all your defense contracts. See, here's the thing is that you think because I say I vote Republican that like I'm a deep like, no, I think they're all full of shit. I just think that one side is more batshit insane than the other. All of them are illogical. And I used to think otherwise, but you know, when one, one side of the aisle says that men, men and women don't exist, I can't. That's the predominant thinking in our current society is that biological sex doesn't exist. I'm sorry. I can't get on board with that. Doesn't mean we're all... Doesn't mean I hate anyone or anything like that. You're all fine. I equally dislike all of you. Gay, straight, or other. Frankly. You kind of all irritate me. Regardless. 
So, but I think that the one side of the aisle has kind of lost its collective fucking mind. The other side is just spineless cowards. Republicans are spineless cowards. Democrats have lost their minds. They've gone so far away from reality, it's, you can't keep up with it. Changes what they call people changes every week. The new terminology changes every week. English changes every day. Everybody's they now. I can't do it. I'm not about it. Don't want to be a they. The military, they teach you now, no mother, no father. We're all just formless blobs. They say it's gender neutral. It's just formlessness. No definition. It's not neutral anything. It's, it's neutral everything. You are nothing. You are, you are a blob. You're just a formless object if you have no definition. So, I don't know why anybody would want to be a they. What are you then, a plural? I mean, you're multiple people. It doesn't make any sense to me. But then again, it would be indicative of a decadent and dying society. That's why I'm trying to make magic internet money instead of a real job. Um, okay, I'm done. I promise, I'm done. This is not a political channel. This is about day trading. I'm going to stop it there. But just remember, Republicans are spineless cowards. Never stick up for their beliefs. They always lose. Because they're spineless. Including Ted Cruz. Including President Trump. All very spineless. But it definitely like McCarthy. Even more spineless. At some point, you have to take the insanity of the other side and you just have to, like, stop and say no. Like, no. Like, okay, now we're all they. Now men are women, but now we're also animals and furries. How about no? How about not? Right? And just leave it there. Maybe I should go put on my furry costume. Okay, I'm done with the politics. That is not the purpose of this channel, I promise. I'm watching Scammer Payback on my phone. I might take a little break here from the market. Uh, leave it going. Leave the recording going for you. Um, if I, I want to say that uh, whatever you are politically, whatever you are in terms of your ideological beliefs, I, I don't give a fuck about you. I, d I don't care is what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I'm not aiming anything at you. I'm, I'm bloviating. I am bloviating. I'm yammering. You should not take anything I say in that manner seriously because it doesn't matter what I think at all. I have no impact on anything. Okay. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Oh. All right. We're back in action. And by action, I mean not action. It's considering what it wants to do with its life. So this right here, all right, this price action that you see right here that's happening very slowly, let's say that this were the regular trading hours, the same formation would happen same pushes into liquidity, same draws on liquidity, but it would happen faster. It's all the same. Price is all fractal. It's, it's all computerized, but it is uh, slower. Slower right now. You know, Watching Scammer Payback. Love him. Love Scammer Payback. Love Kit Boga. Yeah, so when I was in college, I met some folks that were Republican lobbyists. I thought they were very strange people. I didn't like them at all. Even though I was on the same political aisle, I did not like did not like them. Right, so we came down into this short-term liquidity here, found a little bit of support. It's working that liquidity right now. It should want to come lower. When it decides to come lower, like in a big way, it should go quickly. So this, this trade should go from being very slow to very quick. Okay, we're in the Asian PM session right now. Check our 15 minute chart. We're coming up on New York midnight. Very uh, vertical price action, huh? Hourly chart. Let's get back down to the one minute nitty gritty, gritty and knit. Okay, so this dealing range has now been breached. You can see that we've come down into sell side liquidity. It, it didn't want to push into it, but it did slowly, slowly. So now we've got a, a, a different dealing range that we're working in. I'm gonna say it's this dealing range. So we're working in a new dealing range here from low to high. We're in a deep discount relative to that. I think it wants to come into our next dealing range. Uh, it did find support right here. You can see on that 25%. 127 spot 25. Lots of support there. It's been working that 25% of the, of the current dealing range. I do believe it wants to come down punch into further sell side. Uh, next yellow box. I haven't moved the yellow box in quite some time. It's right there. If, if yellow box can stay open right meaning the price doesn't come back to yellow box that would be a good sign probably not going to stay open probably going back to that yellow box
Yeah, it's coming back into this uh, buy side inefficiency here. It's probably coming all the way up to 131 evens. Would like to see it reject that. Uh, it's making you think it doesn't want to come up through yellow box. It does. It's coming to uh, one low right there. It comes in at 131 evens. Tag that. Good rejection, good initial reaction. Okay, 131 evens had a good initial reaction. Next level, 132 and a half. That's the consequent encroachment. The EQ of this wick right here. That would be another place for it to react. You know, this thing could end up coming all the way back up here and then turning lower. So, do I want to take a four hour long trade? No, would rather not. But it could come all the way back up into these inefficiencies and then turn lower. Really wanted to see this yellow box here remain open. It did not, uh, but I wanted to see that. Did we actually keep it open by a tick? High there was 130 spot 75. Low there was 131 even. So that did leave it open by a tick. That's pretty good. One tick, one tick. Pretty good. Coming back down to that 127 and a quarter, that is 25% uh, of the current dealing range. Love to see that. Uh, what is that? Yeah, that tick up to 131 evens. To keep that open, that would be a good sign. Use my affiliate links. Um, quick required government disclosure, SEC and CFTC disclosure. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. What you are seeing on the screen is simulated trading. The profits and losses on the screen do not represent uh, real financial gain or loss. We're trading with a company called Top Step Trader on a Step 2 account, meaning that this is simulated trading, does not represent live market conditions. A legal disclaimer in case I need this. I'm not soliciting you for legal services. Don't want the state bar coming down to me either. Okay, taking lower. That was a good mark to market right there. Would like to see that yellow box up there to 131 evens. Keep that open. What do I mean by open? Not trade it back to. If you are just watching the stream right now, instead of you know watching the whole thing, I totally understand. I am pretty fucking boring. Uh, why did I take this trade? Well, market has generally been in a sort of range bound, turtle souping reject every new high and low condition as we're in a lower volatility environment so I would expect that. So I initially got in short two contracts right there then another contract right there the market ran all the way up almost hit my stop did not hit my stop I put the stop right above the 50 percent what I thought was the 50 percent of that wick uh, so we didn't quite get there was not stopped out um, why is the profit target where it is? Well, we have our new day or resettlement gap down here in the green box. That should be uh, a draw back on liquidity. It should be tugging on price to come lower. What has been happening for the past hour? Uh, working this dealing range here was working a prior dealing range as well. Working that premium and discount. It's ironing out and delivering a fair price relative to these inefficiencies that we had. These weak inefficiencies. We're ironing those out, retrading that same area to deliver an efficient price. What's been happening for the last hour. Um, current market assessment is that I would like to see the price point of 131 evens not be traded back to. That would be a, a good sign for immediate lower. Um, it could do that and then still come up all the way up to 136 evens and then come lower. That would not invalidate the trade idea. Uh, I have not moved the stop down as and it could at any point mark to market come in the market take us all the way up to like 136 and then pop back down so my trade idea here is not really invalid unless it gets back up all the way up to 143.50 I 
Do I want to see that? Do I want to experience that pain again? No, I do not. But that being said, this thing could just mark the market all the way up here and then come back down. Um, this is obviously not a live stream. I've decided not to live stream my day trading as I cannot focus on this and a chat window. I don't want to be asked whether I trade Bitcoin 30,000 times, which is what you would do if I put this on a live stream. You would ask me, do I trade Bitcoin about 30,000 times? And I'm not dealing with that. I know you people at this point. I know how you operate. And it's, but do you trade Bitcoin? Now, but in all seriousness, it would be distracting to me. So I'm kind of treating this like a live stream, but on a recording. The other question you would ask me would be, what is a fair value gap? And I'm just not answering that 30,000 times. Go watch ICT. I think one of the criticisms for Michael that I have, although I do adore him, obviously, is that um, he doesn't really show you a lot of losses. Then again, he's a very good trader. So I don't know how many losses he actually takes. So... I might buy a Scammer Payback shirt at some point. I like him a lot. I like Scammer Payback. A okay, five-minute chart. I mean, the idea on the five-minute chart is exactly the same. It's just that you can see we had a bunch of weak inefficiencies here that we are slowly grinding our way back through, re-delivering and rebalancing these weak inefficiencies on the left. Would really like to see that 136 remain open. It's probably not. 131, sorry. 131 is probably not staying open. It's probably going to get traded back to. It's not what I wanted to see. I have to get an inefficiency up here that, that remains open, even if it's by one tick. That being said, I think it is probably coming back to 131. It's very reasonable for price to do that and then go lower. Three minute chart. It's probably coming back up to one thirty one evens. But we did have a little displacement here, one twenty nine quarters. We could see a reaction there. Next week's going to be a tough week for me. I don't like holidays at all. Kind of wish they didn't exist. I like trading. Really don't like holidays at all. Would prefer that the market would be open. see any reason why 
my trade would be invalid at this point. Trade should be valid. Hmm. That was a mark to market back to the upside I did not want to see. Okay, it's going to go back up to 131 evens at this point. Potentially all the way back up and then back down. Should be a very shame. Be quite the shame, but I, I do foresee that in the future that it could go all the way back up here. All the way back up to a premium here, which would be up at 133 and then come lower. You could see that happening. Low that took us to the high here comes in at, um, what is that? That low is at 122 evens. Low is at 122 evens. Would like to see 122 evens closed below. That would be a good sign. Okay, 131 is, is almost certainly in the cards. purpose of this YouTube channel is to video record my attempt to get into professional day trading. Uh, I have lost a lot of money, significant amount of money, uh, trying to trade with my own money and therefore uh, I am trying the cheaper option. cheaper option is to use one of these prop firms. And the one I'm using right now is Top Step. I am of the legal opinion that these sorts of companies will be regulated out of existence in the next few years. With that being said, that's only my legal thoughts, and they're not regulated out yet, so use them while you can. If I were their attorney, that's exactly what I would say. Risky business model. But I'm not their attorney. I'm also not licensed in Illinois. So... But uh, it's a very risky business model from a regulation standpoint, and I believe it's um, kind of like online poker. I think it's going to be go the way of online poker, as in regulated out of existence. Okay, got a displacement lower here. So if you're using a top step, if you're using an apex, I would use it now. I don't think they'll be around forever. I do think that they're going to be uh, regulated away. That would be my legal opinion, so they're going to be regulated out of existence. There's a lot of reasons why I think that, but it's a very, it's just my legal opinion. The regulators would not like this kind of business model. It'd be kind of like online poker. So I would use these while you can. I would use Top Step. I'd use Apex while you can before they get regulated away. It's probably coming in the next couple years. Fund yourself on your own uh, trading account. You need to. You need to do that because these companies, in my legal opinion, uh, will not be around forever. That being said, regulations, lawsuits take a long time. So you're probably not going to see, you know, these things, Top Step could be around for another two, three years, I would say. And at that point, probably regulated away. Could be wrong, but it's my legal opinion that these sorts of companies are not going to last. I think the business model is in a very gray area, dangerous regulatory environment. Uh, doesn't, doesn't mean don't try them. Uh, just means be aware that I am an attorney and I'm telling you that these sorts of business models like this, soliciting the public, be like online poker. I don't think they should be regula regulated away. Uh, I'm, I'm not of the like moral opinion that there's anything wrong with like a top step. I'm just telling you that from my legal perspective, knowing a little bit about the regulatory environment, no. Uh, I'm sure that they've consulted with their attorneys on that. I'm sure they're aware. Okay. Coming back down in, let's get out of the legal talk for a second. Uh, just remember that this is simulated trading. Simulated trading, those dollars are not real. They can be real uh, to me. They can be real, you know, in the future. 
if I get funding with Top Step and show profitability, that this can be a real brokerage account, but it's not right now. Okay, current thinking on the market. Let me talk to you about what I'm seeing right here. Uh, I tell you again, the purpose of these live streams would be that if I were, let's say that I had my securities license, I don't, but let's say I had my securities license and I were a prop firm trader or I ran my own prop firm company, I know I would want to see these kind of videos from my traders on the floor. These are the kind of things that I would want to see. I want to see why my traders are taking the decisions they are, know the model, if I'm not teaching them a model, I want to see these kind of recordings. So these are training videos as more as much as they are anything else. Training myself to see the market. Try not to get too frustrated with what the market is doing. Instill discipline. Talk out loud. Let you know what I'm saying as I'm saying it. So the reason why this is a video recording instead of a live stream is because... Uh, I cannot handle all of your inane questions. I can't be distracted by the chat box. Um, a lot of you think that, like, I, I cannot afford to talk to you, basically. Like, I have to make this work. I have to actually trade and make money. And so I cannot spend time telling you what a fair value gap is. I can't afford it. I have to trade. And I have to make income. It's got to come in. So the only way that I can do that is by focusing. And so the video recording is a way for me to do that without having you asking me, you know, 30 times, do I trade Bitcoin and what is a fair value gap? Uh, which is mostly what I'm going to get if I put this up on a live stream. Live stream would be good for the YouTube. It would not be good for me as a trader. So the good happy medium in terms of if you're watching these videos, you're trying to get into day trading yourself. I'm not recommending that you do that. It's very difficult. But if, if that is what you're trying to do then you can see somebody who's trying to do it. You can see it live. You can watch these training sessions and get what I'm seeing in the market, get what I'm thinking. Okay, so we broke into a new dealing range. And so let's see, let's change our dealing range here. We are now probably referencing this. I'm going to say that we're on this dealing range. We're right at the EQ. So you see that our new dealing range trading algorithms are immediately on the EQ there. Probably going to deliver us into a short-term premium and then back to discount. Okay, my order is right at that 25%. Didn't know it was, but it is. So new dealing range here on the uh, on the four-minute chart. What is a dealing range? It's high to low. It's the high to low, the swing that you're currently operating in. And whenever you break out into a new range, you get a new dealing range. These things are all modular. They change. Market conditions change. They fluctuate. So you can see we got an immediate reaction there off of 121 and a quarter, right about there, because we are now at the EQ of this low to this high, EQ of this low to this high. So we would expect there to be a reaction right where we got the reaction. Now, it should go from here, a couple minutes of premium relative to this dealing range, maybe come back up about break even on my position, then come lower. So current thoughts would be up here, back into drawdown, and then down. That would be my most reasonable assessment. Now, if it just wants to move straight down, then that would be great. But I'm not calling on that. So we had a th three minute premium here. We've got a lot of price action now sitting between my order here, my position, and the stop loss. So it should have an easier time moving down than up. Let's get on the, let's change to a two minute time, time frame.
Yeah, if I were to practice law, I would want to run my own firm, even though I probably wouldn't be any good at it right now as I have not been a practicing attorney for very long, very much. Um, I just don't like being associate bitch. I really don't. I really don't like being associate bitch. I really don't. There's really no part of me that likes being associate bitch. Okay. Got a Sibby right here. Change the box. I'm a box trader, as you know, I'm a box trader. Fifty percent of that would be right about where my order is, so I think I am going to come back to break even, and then it should turn lower. Five minute chart. Just working. In my opinion, we're working on this current dealing range. Sell side liquidity is down below 099 evens. Okay, that's where sell side liquidity is. New day opening gap is EQ of that, 107 quarters basically. The market right now is really not in a condition to make breakaway gaps, so I don't think that this will be a breakaway gap. I think we're all coming all the way back up to 127 halves and then lower. I don't think the market's in the mood to make breakaways. So I think it's coming all the way to put me in a little bit of drawdown again and then lower. Yeah, you know, whenever I was in law school, and whenever I was practicing, I really enjoy researching and writing. Never really been much with the client interaction. Okay, what is the blue Fibonacci? It is this SIBI, or fair value gap, to answer your question. 124, three quarters is the midway point of that, or EQ of this SIBI. EQ of this SIBI is right there, 124, three quarters. That's consequent encroachment to be accurate, but I just call them all EQ. Okay. Um, a good reaction, like a nice bearish reaction, would be an immediate, an immediate rejection of the midpoint of this buy side imbalance, sell side, in, sorry, uh, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, or SIBI. So a good reaction off this SIBI would be at 124 uh, three quarters. That being said, I don't think the market is in the mood to do that. So I think the market's coming up to 126 spot 75. I think it is going to come and fully refill this uh, SIBI and then come come back down. And if these sorts of patterns are playing out the way that they have been the past few hours, it's coming all the way back up here, 130s. And then lower. I mean, either way, I think it's going back lower. I just, you know, like ideal scenario, which is unlikely, is that it rejects the 25%. So it just rejects discount of that SIBI and then moves lower. That would be ideal scenario. Does that happen? Probably not.
We're on a three-minute chart, NASDAQ, NQ Futures. Time is 23.46, New York local time. We're working in the Asian PM session. AM, Asian PM session now. Okay. believe the Tokyo Stock Exchange is open. Let me just check that. Just make sure that I know my Asian PM times. I have gotten a little bit of positive video, uh, positive feedback on my videos. Um, some people on my YouTube channel saying thank you and, and all this stuff. I, I uh, appreciate that. I'm trying to monetize you for your clicks. So I appreciate you being a willing participant in my scheme. Okay, Japan is open for another two hours and 13 minutes. So we're, we're in uh, Asian PM right now, PM Asia. Let's check out Hong Kong. Hong Kong is open for another 12 minutes. Shanghai is closed. Shenzhen is closed. So we have Tokyo is open for another two hours. Singapore is open for another 12 minutes. So, and Australian Stock Exchange is open for another two hours. So we're looking at another two hours, another two hours here of uh, Asian PM session into the start of London, the opening of the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and London. London's the second biggest session of the day after New York. There's London AM and London PM. Okay. Algorithmic offloading right there. So what, let me just describe that to you. As we come into sell side liquidity here, our first pool of sell side liquidity that was there, your lead market makers are sitting below that nearest low there and their algorithms kick in. They start offloading their inventory right away. It's offloading that inventory algorithmically. So in the same way that we saw right after we made a new high, we get an algorithmic selling right right there the same exact thing and you come into a sell side to get algorithmic buy signature right there slowly distributing the inventory that they took on what is the inventory it's your stop that is their inventory your stop is their inventory contracts gotta go somewhere Your stops are the market maker's inventory. All automated though, it's all automated. Humans don't do that, it's all automated. Current market condition. We're in a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. So we're buy side inefficient up to 126 halves. Currently, right at the equilibrium of our new dealing range, which is from high to low, red Fibonacci. Target is on the way to the new day opening gap, which you can see the price right after resettlement made and then referenced for a very long time. And I believe it's coming back down to new day opening gap, which is green box. My tech profit is on the way, not in the new day opening gap, but on the way. So I think it's a very reasonable take profit, 15 points.
So All right, all right, all right. We're here. We're live. Asian PM session. Tokyo's got another two hours. That will take us into Frankfurt, take us into London. I will stop the video recording uh, if we can get a, a profit fill here. A very long recording for one trade. We go from recording to recording here. Current market conditions. We have rejected twice off the 25% of this buy side inefficiency here, which is, you know, a decent sign for lower. We're on the two minute chart. listening to scammer payback on the headphones okay yeah we're probably coming back all the way to uh, a 126 three quarters gonna take me back into drawdown EQ of that SIBI right there is gonna be at 124 spot 75 that is the consequent encroachment of that SIBI I call it EQ Okay, so a lot of the tools that you're using, or that y'all are using, I don't agree with. 
I don't like your volume profile. I don't like your book map, and I don't like your indicators. I don't like your Bollinger Bands. Uh, I don't like your supply and demand zones. I dislike all of those things. I don't like your jigsaw. I don't like your level two. Alright, the next strong on the chart that it will at least be there for the overnight session is going to be our New York Open at midnight. That's being at one minute. Um, trading view settings. See that I'm on New York. No, I don't live in New York. We're on electronic trading hours. What am I looking for down here in the bottom right of the screen? I'm waiting for this to come into New York Open for midnight. So that is the start of the new Friday's 24-hour banking cycle. It is at New York midnight. So I'm watching that. Watching for the minute that it opens. Okay, new 24-hour banking cycle. And our next mark to market is going to be the open. Okay, there's our open. So 122 spot 75 there is our new 24 hour banking cycle open. So the new 24 hour candle using New York open at midnight is now forming. I expect a move higher and then lower. I'm expecting this to retrace against me relative to the current dealing range that we're in. 
the dealing range that we're in right now, we're in a short-term premium, so we're sitting above the 50% of this dealing range. Expect that short-term premium to want to seek a discount. I can't wait around. There's something wrong here. I'm no expert, but I hear my intuition calling. So, we're now in the New York Midnight Hour. The new 24-hour banking cycle has begun. Currently trading slightly above the New York Midnight Open. A few ticks. Currently working in a premium a dealing range right here. Currently sitting in a small short-term premium relative to that. Premium's been going on for about 20 minutes. So we've been in a premium here for 28 minutes. This is the baby. Tokyo Stock Exchange is going to close in two hours. And that's going to lead us into Frankfurt Open. Start of the London overnight session. I will stop the recording at some point here soon. Kind of whether it hits my take profit or not. Yeah, because we're looking at two hours and 21 minutes here on the recording. I would like to, you know... Let the trade play out before I end the recording. But I'm not sure if the market's going to cooperate with that. This is probably taking me back into drawdown. Hourly chart. You can see that we are trading above the New York Midnight Open. So, a couple different scenarios that could play out right now. We come up and we reject at 126.75. That would be just re-delivering this fair value gap. 
The next level is the consequent encroachment inverting of this wick. It's 127 spot 5. And then coming up to the consequent encroachment of this wick, which would be 129 spot 75, could do that as well and reject. All of those would be premium PD arrays that could um, reject. You see that we're currently trading in a premium relative to the current dealing range in which we are operating, which is from this low to this high. We are in a discount, sorry, a premium relative to that. And premium should search discount. These video recordings are what I would do if I were running a trading company. I'd want to see my employees do this. Unfortunately, I am self-employed, quote-unquote. I'm unemployed. So, I have to do it on my own. Now trading below the New York Open 12 a.m. price. So if you were watching your daily candle, it would have just opened, traded into a small uh, premium, and then uh, I think it should come lower and seek discount. Um, that's our power of three concept, which is accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Okay, that would be a little bit of a small manipulation there. It should start to distribute. I believe uh, that for Friday's trading, it's going to be attracted all the way down here. What is here? Regular trading hours. I believe that Friday's trading could come back down to 14,895 uh, because that is our regular trading hours from Monday to Tuesday. That's a regular trading hours gap down there and I think that price should be drawn to that during Friday's uh, regular trading hours session. In terms of what I would expect for London, which would come up in a couple hours, maybe work into these wicks. I don't know what that box is. I'm going to leave that box. I'm walking you through this trade step by step, very slowly. Okay, got a displacement lower, below our New York 12 a.m. opening price. So now our daily candle had a small tick above and should be trading lower. That would be a good sign for a very bearish day. Just a very small movement above on the New York open, the 12 a.m. candle. So rather than kind of, you know, bouncing up all around it, if we can get a straight displacement down from our New York 12 a.m. open, not so much time spent above it, that would be a very good sign for Friday's trading being down. So obviously TradingView does not have the ability for you to set the daily candle to New York midnight, but that is the start of the 24-hour banking cycle, according to Michael Huddleston. And as you know, he is my mentor. He is from whom I learn.
So two kind of big draws on liquidity right now that I'm seeing lower. Okay, I'll give you, you're always wondering, like, what is my bias? What is my bias? Well, you need to find, figure out what your draws on liquidity are. Earlier, they were drawing into these wick inefficiencies. Now, we've got two draws on liquidity lower. The first is new day opening gap, okay, which we've kept on the chart, obviously, for the whole session. The whole time I've been here, you've seen green box here. That's tugging on price to come lower. The draw is, is that new day opening gap. Although it has been traded up and down and all around and fully rebalanced by this point, it could keep referencing that all day if it wanted to. So that's tugging on price. The other thing, got two other things that are tugging on price. Sell side liquidity down here below 099 evens is tugging on price. Okay, and then way lower, like unreasonably lower, is our regular trading hours gap from between Mondays and Tuesday. That's also tugging price on price. So you got really three things that I could see that are tugging on price right now that are drawing price down. The other thing that's kind of drawing on price is that in our current dealing range, we are in a small premium, okay? We're in like a two-point premium. It should go seek a discount. I don't know if I can keep this video recording going uh, long enough to play this trade out to its conclusion. It should be very slow in the next hour. So I don't really want to let this thing go over three hours. Not really. would like to see this trade come to its conclusion. But I don't know if that's going to happen. 15 minute chart.
All right. We're coming back up to, uh, you know, where I thought it would. So first, that 126 and a quarter, which is the 75% of the SIBI. Did it come up to the full? Let's see. Low here is 127 halves. High here is 127 quarters. So we're one tick off of re-delivering that SIBI. Okay, now we've re-delivered it. Reaction. Okay, so that high there was 127 uh, halves. The low here was 127 halves. So that is a re-delivered SIBI there. Um, the other place I would expect it to come up would be right there. Okay, I've seen these patterns a lot. These kind of displacements down, retraces all the way back up right there. Okay, that's the next spot I'm looking at. So it did behave as expected. We're on a five minute chart now. We are trading uh, in a premium relative to our current dealing range, we're also trading above New York uh, open midnight. These would be power of three concepts that should take us lower. This is the payback. This is the payback. Payback. I open up my heart to erase all the tension. If you're my guardian angel, I'm feeling misdirected. Okay. Orange line. Orange line is kind of where I'm expecting it to go then reject. That is the current expectation is orange line. It could really reject anywhere here and turn lower, but my most, I'm being kind of a pessimist here and I think that most likely it's orange line. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so probably just going to get like some sort of a liquid pop up the orange line and then just down. Check out our one minute chart. Yeah, it is probably going to just get you that like immediate pop up the orange line and then down. Kind of my thinking. Although, this would be a pretty reasonable spot here at 127 halves for price to reject as well. Okay. 
we're very slowly working our way lower. Although, although as time goes on, this is going to accelerate. Okay. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to stop the recording there. I know that the trade is still open. This recording has gone on long enough, I think. Uh, I kind of want to go for a walk, get away from the screen. Um, A close below 126 quarters would be a good close here on the four minute chart. Four minute close below uh, 126 quarters would be a good close. I'll let it go another like 10 minutes. That was a good close. Below the 75% of our two minute SIBI. There's our one minute SIBI right there. But uh, I don't think that's super accurate. I want to keep it to the two minute Sibby, which is right there. Well, that's not really accurate either. Three minute? Four minute? Yeah, we'll do the four minute Sibby. And closes, closes here below 125 spot 75 are good closes. Currently sitting above New York midnight open price. That is the start of the 24 hour banking cycle. You can find a way. It's too damn late. Well, let's see what it looks like on our one minute. So, we see here on a one minute chart, we have this one minute SIBI. Price uh, came back up into it. Uh, redelivered up into the 75% of that. We have thus far rejected that and res respected it. Okay, I do unfortunately still think this is coming up the orange line. Wick inefficiency there could invert drive price lower. But orange line is my, like, probably, probably going to do orange line. 
I've seen these patterns enough. Orange line is probably where it's going. It's probably going to orange line. We are in a premium in our dealing range here. It should not want to spend too much time in this premium. Yeah, the recording's still going here. Damn, it's going to be an over three hour long recording. That's going to be a long upload. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I need a break. I need to go take a walk. Yeah, I think it's coming up to orange line. All right, 11 minutes is going to be a three hour long recording. That would be enough for me. And then I'm sorry to leave that open, but I, you know, this trade could take another three hours for all I know. I don't want to be, I want to go walk. I want to get away from the screen for a bit. Probably looking at orange line. I'll go for another uh, 10 minutes. I'm sorry if you're watching this and you expected there to be a conclusion to this trade. I don't, you know, I don't control the market. I don't know how long it's going to take. 
What I do know is that if you trailed up your stop, just trailed, if you were short, okay, if you were short and you trailed your stop right there, that's probably being hit. That's probably being hit. Almost certainly being hit. I mean, I'm not going to say almost certainly, but like that's in the crosshairs right there. So orange line is the consequent encroachment of this candle's wick. There are going to be people who shorted this thinking that's a quote-unquote breakout. It's not. Um, it's coming, but it's not It's not yet. Um, so I do think orange line, there's going to be liquidity just above that big displacement black candle right there for people who are trying to short that on a breakout, quote-unquote. Um, so... With that being said, we're probably looking at orange line. Now, if not, you know, could reject really anywhere here, in here. I'm expecting lower uh, right now. Um, although maybe not. Uh, I will, after I go for a walk, I will start up the next recorder. Pretty much going to record all of my trading as I do believe that it's good therapy for me. Uh, and if it grows a YouTube channel and gets some money coming out of YouTube channel, I'm happy with that too. Uh, I do appreciate the kind words from uh, the folks that have given me that. Uh, I obviously get some smart asses that come in the comments as well. Uh, you can come try and do this yourself. You probably don't. If you do, good on you. Uh, I'm trying to join you there in the land of income. Land of profitability. It is elusive. But yeah, if you trail the stop up above these little short-term highs here, that's probably being hit. That's probably going to be hit. Cinco minutos. Yeah, you know, could I have gotten rid of this trade as it came back into profit? Yes. I don't think that would be optimal. I'm expecting orange line. I think my anxiety with these, with trading is decreasing over time. I think that video recording my own trading decreases my anxiety.
Bryce is always doing lots of interesting things. You might not see the interest in it. Okay, going to be on the five minute chart and this recording is coming up on that three hour mark. I don't really want to go above that. I'm still expecting orange line, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what that did, huh? Yeah, so this, you know, I doubt that this this particular recording is going to get a lot of uh, attention. Not that any of my videos do, but I just can't keep this going you know, ad infinitum here. I must um, stop it. Uh, go take a break from the screen and I'll start up a new one. Uh, and we'll follow in the next video. Uh, we'll follow the trade to its conclusion. I wasn't planning on holding on a trade this long. Um, I would love to show you multiple trades, but I've just been following the same idea for hours. I'm still thinking that the tug, it's going to come back to New Day opening gap. Nothing about that has changed. It's just slowly working. All price is fractal, so it always does the same thing. Ad infinitum. Uh, but sometimes slower and sometimes faster, depending on the session time that you're in. It will pick up. Coming into London and Frankfurt and London, it's going to pick up. Um, our New York opening price there was at 122 spot 75. We're sitting above that. Um, we are currently sitting in a premium SIBI, okay, premium relative to this red Fibonacci that you see here. That is the current dealing range in which we are operating. And so relative to that, this SIBI is now premium. We are sitting up in a premium, so it should come seek discount. Nothing about that has changed. It's just uh, slow. So it's just kind of meandering right now, seeking some liquidity. Uh, rain up the liquidity that would have been in the SIB B. You know, it's ironing out some inefficiencies, I think, prior to a shoot, a shot lower. So sometimes with trading like this, what I found is that you can get in an idea early, it will meander a very long time, and then just shoot. You could sit in this trade, it's, it's like for hours, and then it will shoot to your target. You know, it's all variable like that. It's not a guarantee. Um, that's why it's very difficult uh, because price will be very slow and then it will be very fast all of a sudden it appears to be all of a sudden it's it's not but uh, it's it's working its way down to back to new day opening gap slowly slowly and it might even have a big pop higher before it does it so this might trade might go all the way back into drawdown and then all the way back I would not like to see that but it's a realistic possibility which is why the stop loss has not moved nothing about even coming all the way back Nothing about my opinion that it's coming back to New Day opening gap, which is green box, would, would change. Therefore, the stop has not moved. Um, and I'm going to follow that idea to its conclusion. Or until I see something otherwise, you know, that proves, tells me. None of, none of this price action would have changed my opinion that the objective is back to New Day opening gap. So... That is that. Uh, we are sitting in a premium relative to New York 12 a.m. open. It means our daily candle now has a little stubby stub, a little stubby stub above it on our daily candle. Uh, it would be a very strong uh, idea for a daily bearish range, okay, if we don't get very far above New York open 12 a.m. So our 24 hour banking cycle, which would go from right now all the way to Friday, Friday's resettlement, it's going to be in a while. Um, 
if all we can get is a small movement above New York Open 12 a.m., then that would be a very stubby uh, manipulation above the New York Open 12 a.m. and then big bearish candle. That's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking that's going to happen here on Friday uh, is because we have a regular trading hours gap down here at uh, 895. That should tug on price tomorrow during the regular trading hours. We should see a return back to Monday and Tuesday's price, which would be a fair price for the week. That would be a fair price for the week. I don't know if we get there, but I do think it's a possibility. Um, we are going to have liquidity sitting below 028 quarters. All of these lows here, it's going to be loaded with um, liquidity. Regular trading hours gap, you, uh, sorry, regular trading hours, you can see we have New York AM low here. We've got a New York AM low here and a New York PM low here. Those are going to be loaded with liquidity. So anywhere from 037 evens is going to be first liquidity target, second liquidity target, 025 quarters. Um, I think on Friday we're at least seeing these Redeliveries of these lows here, okay, down into this liquidity pool, maybe into some of these uh, sell side inefficiencies, but at least, you know, I'm going to say that bullseye is going to be down right here. Is that a demand zone? No, just a liquidity pool. It looks like a demand zone. It's not. It's just a liquidity pool, and it's just sitting there resting liquidity. That's on our regular trading hours. So I think that's going to tug on price to the downside. Um, and then did we get any, yeah, London lows were higher, so, okay. All right, I'm going to go for a walk. Uh, I'm going to step away from the screen. I'm going to take a break, come back to the screen, start up the recording, coming into our pre-London and then London session. So that's going to be it for Asian session. I'm sorry you didn't see this trade play out to its conclusion. I don't control the market. So with that, God bless. Bye-bye.